All right, cleared off 20 years worth of mouse poop off of this top shelf. Uh, a little bit of floor cleaning, but not an awful lot. And what is in this, a couple of uh, big pieces that made through. And what's inside here is all that little stuff. So if you do a lot of cleaning, this is a very, very handy device. This is the Vortex cleaner that I was, uh, well, I put together, you know, from uh, stuff from the hardware store. This is, uh, well, this is the brand name of this particular one. I think this is the only one that I've seen. I'm sure that there are others. Um, the top is an easy pull top that a, uh, well, it's supposed to be easier to remove. I'm going to have to take two hands. On the inside of the lid, I made a um, stiffener out of some masonite. I did laser cut it uh, because I could. Um, I think I would probably, if I had the option, I would make this out of something thicker. My laser cutter won't cut quite that thick, but uh, something that would be uh, you know, a half inch or three quarter inch would probably work better. It would be nice to get a little bit more stiffness, you know, maybe have this attached to this more strongly, but at the same point, I don't really want to lose the flexibility of having it on the plastic lid. These are some adapters that I also got at the hardware store. Uh, this is a hose coupler for shop vacs that I ended up cutting in half. Uh, this is to attach the couplings that come with the shop vac that I got, which is, it's a Craftsman. Um, your shop vac might have different attachments that have different ends. So what I would do is I would try and find the coupler that fits and adapt it with this. You might be able to get by with just attaching it directly, but this is a, it's a press fit, so I wanted to go with something that was a little more durable and solid. Now, unfortunately, it is very top heavy and kind of cumbersome, so as I'm using it, it does tend to tip over a lot, which is why I made this base. So I moved down into the basement living room to work on the base. Uh, it's a really rainy day today and it's kind of uncomfortable and muggy to be working outside. So this is just a nicer place to work. I found this bucket. Uh, this was one of the many, many buckets that were uh, hanging around in the in the storage shed. Rinsed it out pretty well. Seems to be pretty clean. This is, uh, you know, it's not a five gallon bucket. It's a, it's a shorty, but a five gallon bucket fits very nicely inside here. And I also found this at the hardware store, which is a, it's like a furniture dolly. Um, I've used these before on other projects and they work really nicely. Three eighths inch bolt, two and a half inches long, a two inch fender washer, and a three eighths T nut. Basic idea is I want to send this up from the bottom, drill a hole, in the bucket that will fit the T-nut in from the back and then whoop, push the T-nut through and heat it up with the heat gun so that it's seated properly and then bolt it down and that should hold the bucket to this very nicely. I'm starting with a uh, 1 8 inch bit so I can just put a small hole in the center because uh, this is, it is difficult to get a hole right in the center. Uh, I missed this one just a little bit, but it's not going to matter that much. This one's a 7 16 bit. Uh, it is just about the right size for the T-nut.
little bit small. I suppose I could go to half inch. That will work nicely. All right, I'm temporarily threading the hole here, or threading this on just so that I have something to hold on to. If I can do this without heating it, let's see if that'll work. So, let me just trim this off on the bottom a little bit. Okay, now the truly fun part comes. And there, I was able to uh, heat it. I ended up heating it from the inside uh, and pulling it through so that it's properly seated and it sticks out the bottom just enough, I do believe. So, we can put this together. And there we go. That is a base unit that's significantly heavier than the five gallon bucket is just by itself. And that fits in there perfectly. And then can roll around as necessary. To hook this up, you take the attachment from the vacuum that goes into the top and then the vacuum hose with whatever you're sucking up uh, goes into this input <laughs> which is really hard to do one-handed there we go uh, and then once you, when you vacuum, everything gets sucked up into this bin first. And it generally keeps most of your waste out of here, which is really nice if you're trying to, if you're doing a lot of like sawdust or um, wood chips or things like that. Or in my case, there's a ton of mouse poop in here. I'm trying to, you know, I have to clean up the shed. Uh, but this works extremely well for separating out the bigger chunks and it makes cleaning this a lot easier and it takes a lot longer to fill up. And there's a dog. Some improvements I would probably make, I would probably add weight 
to the bottom of the base uh, to keep it from tipping over. It's still a little bit top heavy and it can topple. It doesn't matter that much because it still works pretty well, but it's just kind of inconvenient to have it popping over all the time. Uh, other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, it's mobile. It can scoot around when I'm moving stuff around the shop. Uh, if I want to, I can really attach it to the shop vac so that it's kind of one unit. I'm just not that enthusiastic about it. So, anyway, um, tips and tricks, I suppose. See you guys next time.